Layoffs are reportedly coming to Ford's Oakville plant. According to the union that represents its workers, about 185 jobs will be cut this September and more layoffs are possible in January. The union says the automaker is easing production due to slowing sales. The company hasn't confirmed the news yet, but it comes just about over a week after Bombardier announced 550 job cuts at its plant in Thunder Bay. Ontario blamed the feds for those layoffs. Premier Doug Ford says the prime minister hasn't done enough to secure an exemption from Buy America provisions in the U.S. Justin Trudeau has failed this country when it comes to standing up for Buy America. This week, one of Ford's ministers was in Washington for a series of meetings. Was Buy America on the agenda? Earlier, before the news of those four job losses, I spoke to Vic Fideli, Ontario's Minister of Economic Development and Trade. He joined us via Skype from North Bay. Hi, Minister Fideli. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you, Vashi. So I know that you're just back from a trip to Washington this week. When you were there, did you discuss Buy America? And were you able to secure any assurances that Canada might be able to get exemptions to that, that policy? Well, a couple of things. First, I mostly met with uh, our own team, uh, our U.S. team on the ground in Washington and all uh, throughout uh, uh, the United States. So it was a, a serious level of discussion. Uh, and I did meet with uh, Canadian uh, Ambassador to the U.S., David McNaughton, and we talked about a variety of issues. Uh, and we talked about the fact that how serious trade is uh, to both the United States and to Canada, but specifically Ontario, and that we are really hoping that it be brought up uh, as part of the final uh, uh, negotiations on NAFTA. And what was the response that you received? Well, we all know, I think, right across the right across uh, Ontario, how serious this is. Uh, uh, trade between the United States and uh, uh, Ontario is uh, about four hundred million dollars. It's about um, or a billion dollars, I should say, about four hundred billion dollars, almost fifty-fifty. Uh, there are single largest trading partner. There are nineteen U.S. states. So this is the message we're delivering: nineteen U.S. states. We're their number one trading partner and nine further U.S. states, we are their number two trading partner. So the message that we will continue to deliver is, look, this Buy America is very harmful to the U.S. as much as it is to Ontario. Is it your impression, though, that, for example, Ambassador McNaughton is as seized as yourself with the issue? Well, I would say that uh, all levels of government uh, should understand how important the, this Buy America restriction is. Received a warm uh, reception from Ambassador McNaughton. As I say, we discussed a number of issues. I found him uh, to be very understanding. Obviously, he was very critical in uh, in getting the deal to where it is today. Um, but we we definitely need the Buy America part uh, to be uh, dropped out of the final deal. This is uh, this is an increase of uh, uh, U.S. Uh, components in, in uh, anything that's made in America must be uh, almost 75% now with American components. And if it's steel, it's 95%. So, uh, you know, this will restrict, uh, tremendously restrict trade between us and the states. And what we need the president and the, the governors to inform the president and, and the, the Congress and Senate that this is going to hurt those, uh, those 28 states particularly harsh. I'm asking you, Minister, I guess, about your uh, impression of Ambassador McNaughton and, uh, and and who he represents, of course, the federal government. That'll be direct because your tone and the language you're using is very different from what the Premier has said. He explicitly said following the meetings uh, between Premiers in Saskatoon that I think he said Justin Trudeau has been a total failure on Buy America. That's not what you're saying right now. No, Do you, you think know, that... You asked me about... Uh, about uh, well, Ambassador uh, McNaughton represents this government, Justin right? Trudeau, I think they bungled it. I think... They, they misread the situation uh, uh, in the original deal uh, that only the prime minister can, can sign off on. And for them not to understand how critically important it was to remove Buy America from that deal, I think they bungled the what deal. What evidence do you have that they didn't understand it, though? Just because they weren't able to secure it's exemptions? It. Well, it, it rarely ever came up. But we're hearing about it now. 
uh, we have been talking about it since the uh, 2018, early in 2018. Uh, I wrote about Buy America in one of my early newsletters saying, this is something, we need to seize this. The federal government needs to seize this now. They have no idea. I mean, I can tell you, I sat as a mayor in 2008 when President Obama put Buy America in. And uh, we did, I launched back then a mayor to mayor campaign. We were about in North Bay, we were about to buy a $6.7 million um, uh, uh, some water treatment equipment from Cortland, New York. And I called the mayor down there and I said, you know, if, if, if you don't uh, push your government to lift Buy America, we're going to end up seeing the government in Canada retaliate. I won't be able to buy that uh, membrane from you and you're going to have to lay off 47 people. And we went on mayor to mayor, city to city, all the mayors in the country in Canada, we rallied them to write to their mayors of communities in the states where they were about to buy equipment. I mean, we need to be on the ground level. Yet, I, yet I, Minister, in, er, in early 2018, you referenced the disagreement and you were critical of then Premier Kathleen Wynne. You called what she did in retaliation uh, or, or her threats of retaliating against Buy America policies uh, at a state to state level. You called it uh, you said you you dismissed it as a last ditch election ploy. She was initiating a trade war with the United States. Now you're yes, basically you asking the federal government to do the same thing. No, we're not asking them to, to retaliate. We're asking them to, go, to negotiate, to uh, bring some, some sense into the fact that these are huge trading partners. Costs will go up in Ontario. Costs will go up in, in uh, the United States. This is exactly what we're saying, is that... It, you have to be able to get in there and seize this opportunity and negotiate this. And from what we can tell, they've just simply swept it aside and allowed this to happen. So, but but I just want to make sure that I'm clear because you're, you're complimentary of Ambassador McNaughton, who, of course, was a big part of those NAFTA negotiations. Uh, he was sitting around the table with Justin Trudeau, with Christian Freeland. What, what is he, how is he any different than, than them? If you're saying they're failures, is he not a failure too? I'm, I'm just not clear. He, the ambassador's job is a, is to uh, mediate and bring the messages from the government. The government make the decisions. And in this case, I truly uh, insist that uh, Justin Trudeau and the federal government have completely bungled that portion of the deal because here we are today facing the threat in 180 days or less now of a Buy America clause that will mean uh, so much uh, harm and pain to Ontario businesses because half of uh, uh, the trade comes from uh, uh, Ontario, between Ontario, between Canada and the U.S. Is that kind of language, I guess, that kind of criticism at a time when Canada might be negotiating on this, though, providing the U.S. with some ground to exploit, I guess? If, if, if Doug Ford, if Premier Doug Ford is calling Justin Trudeau a failure on this, is that something that around the negotiating table the Americans can exploit? Well, it's certainly something that Justin Trudeau got himself into by not doing it. The, the uh, president of the United States has taken this opportunity to uh, produce an executive order suggesting that in 180 days this is going to happen. So obviously the pressure is on and the clock is ticking and there needs to be solid negotiation. They can't hide from it this time. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Minister Fideli. Appreciate your time as always. Thank you, Vashi. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.